All right, good afternoon. I really apologize for being late. Um, just a quick follow-up on the Bahamas. The emergency relief coordinator, Mark Lowcock, uh, has just, should have just landed or is about to land in Nassau, the capital of the Bahamas, where the team that uh, there is updating him on the impact of the hurricane and the ongoing efforts to respond to the, emer to the urgent humanitarian needs. The UN pre-deployed teams to Nassau to support the government-led assessment that is supported by the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, and the teams there are expected to deploy to Abaco and Grand Bahama later today. We're also trying to work on a phone hookup or a video hookup with Mr. Lowcock from the Bahamas for a bit later on this afternoon. We'll keep you posted. Uh, from Lebanon, the UN Force Commander, uh, Major General Stefano Del Col, today met with Prime Minister Said Hariri in Beirut, and after the meeting, he said he had shared his serious concerns at the incident on Sunday where anti-tank missiles claimed by Hezbollah were fired from the southern Lebanon across the Blue Line. He said this was a serious breach of the cessation of hostilities and a gross violation of UN Security Council Resolution 1701. Major General Del Col said UNIFIL's liaison and coordination mechanism played a critical role in de-conflicting the situation along the Blue Line. At this time, he added, UNIFIL remains closely engaged with the parties to contain tensions and incidents and enable a safe and secure environment in the area. He added that this is of paramount importance that the area between the Blue Line and the Latani River is free of any armed personnel, assets and weapons, other than those of the government of Lebanon and UNIFIL, and he said that he and the Prime Minister agreed on the importance of strengthening the capabilities of the Lebanese armed forces in the UNIFIL area of operations in order to enable it to take greater security responsibilities along the Blue Line. And turning to Syria, I can tell you that we remain gravely concerned over the ongoing hostilities in the northwest part of the country. Since hostilities increased in late April, our Human Rights Office reports that more than 1,000 civilians have been killed. Civilian infrastructure has also been significantly impacted, with entire towns having largely been destroyed. However, a unilateral ceasefire announced on August 30th by the government of Syria has resulted in a degree of respite from civilians who have suffered under the intense hostilities of recent months. While artillery shelling reportedly continues to result in casualties, there have been no reported airstrikes since the announcement of the ceasefire. With some 15,000 aid workers on the ground, the UN and, and our humanitarian partners continue to provide shelter, food assistance, and health service to those impacted in the Northwest where security allows. The UN continues to call on all parties to the conflict to do their utmost to ensure the safety and well-being of civilians and to allow their obligate to follow their obligations under international law. Turning to Mali, the UN peacekeeping mission in that country reports that at least 14 people were killed and many more injured, including children, yesterday when a bus hit an improvised explosive device near Dwensa in the Mopti region. The UN mission, supported by Malian armed forces with the medical, uh, excuse me, the UN mission supported Malian armed forces with the medical evacuation of 16 victims and helped secure the site after the incident. We are outraged by this horrendous attack on innocent civilians. We convey our, con our condolences to the families of the victims and the government of Mali and wish those injured a speedy recovery. And as you saw, we issued a statement yesterday on Afghanistan in which the Secretary General strongly condemned the attack in Kabul by the Taliban that took place on Monday. Such indiscriminate attacks can never be justified, he said. Uh, the Secretary General also expressed his concern about civilian casualties caused by pro-government aerial and search operations, including on August 31 in the Faryab province. The full statement was distributed. And back here this morning, the Special Representative for the Secretary General in Libya, Kassan Salame, briefed the Security Council on the situation in the country. 
In his remarks delivered by video link, Mr. Salame paid tribute to the three UN staff members that lost their lives in the attack a few weeks ago. And he said the UN will remain in Libya and he's working to mitigate further risk to UN personnel and operations. The special representative said the worse uh, the situation gets on the ground, the greater need for UN presence, mediation efforts, and provision of humanitarian assistance. According to him, since April 4th, the conflict has spread geographically and has exhausted a heavy toll on civilians and those fighting. To date, more than 100 civilians have been killed and over 300 injured, and 120,000 civilians have been displaced. The full remarks are available online. This afternoon, Council members will debate, uh, will discuss the situation in Syria. And uh, turning to the Congo, after accompanying the Secretary General on his visit to the Democratic Republic of the Congo over the weekend, Under Secretary General for Peace Operations Jean-Pierre Lacroix wrapped up a two-day visit to South Kivu. In Bukavu, Mr. Lacroix met with the government, governor of the province and with UN staff. He also visited several peacekeeping bases, including a standing combat deployment in, B, uh, in Bibatama. Standing uh, combat deployments are structured in place, are structures placed in remote areas to provide a more nimble and efficient protection to civilians affected by ethnic tensions and armed groups. Uh, in the province. In Minembwe, Mr. Lacroix also met with civil society representatives to discuss issues of, of security and community reconciliation. Today, um, as she concluded a week-long mission, the Central African Republic, Ursula Mueller, called for urgent additional funding to meet the humanitarian needs of 2.9 million people in the country. Um, she said the situation in the country continues to deteriorate, and as we mentioned recently, two-thirds of the population depends on aid to survive. This year's humanitarian response plan requires $430.7 million and is less than 50 percent funded. The people in the country need our help now, and we cannot fail them, she said. And also another update from the CAR, yesterday a third armed group committed to protecting children by signing an action plan with the UN. This time, the Unité pour la Paix en Centrafrique, otherwise known as the UPC, a member of the ex Celica coalition, made a formal commitment to take a series of measures to end and prevent grave violations against children, such as releasing all child soldiers in their ranks, ending killing and maiming sexual violence against children, and attacks against schools and hospitals. Virginia Gamba, the head of the uh, Children Armed Conflict Office, said she's encouraged to see that the February peace agreement is bringing more opportunities to engage with armed groups. Um, also want to flag a report by UNICEF saying that one in three young people in 30 countries said they have been a victim of online bullying, with one in five reporting having skipped school due to cyberbullying and violence. Those are some of the outputs of a new poll released today by UNICEF and uh, Ms. Gamba, speaking, on, uh, speaking out anonymously through the youth engagement tool you report almost three quarters of young people also said social networks are most commonplace for online bullying. And I apologize, the report is jointly by UNICEF and the Special Representative Secretary General on violence against children. More information online. I um, want to add just a flag that the fourth UN high-level conference on counterterrorism ended today in Minsk, organized jointly with the government of Belarus. The conference aimed to assess the complex threats arising from terrorist misuse of new and emerging technologies. More than 400 conference participants, including senior officials from 55 countries, exchanged views on how technological and digital change has made terrorist groups more uh, connected, more resilient, and capable than ever before. The conference uh, ended with a call to strengthening international cooperation and to share innovative approaches to counter this threat. And lastly, uh, when we're done here, there'll be a briefing by the UN Conference on Trade and Development on the launch of the Digital Economy Report. And that will, the briefing will be led by Chantaline Carpentier, Chief of UNCTAD's office in New York. And I apologize to them for being late. I will now entertain your queries, should you have any. Mr. Bayes. Uh, what information does the UN have about talks taking place in Jeddah? Uh, involving uh, separatists from the south of Yemen and the Yemeni government, and is Mr. Griffiths involved in this process? No, my understanding is that the UN is not uh, represented at the meeting, 
uh, but we have been in t we are in touch with all the parties and are being kept abreast of developments. Sorry, go ahead, Fatih. Uh, thank you, Steve. Just a quick uh, clarification. Uh, Mr. Lohook uh, arrived, uh, landed in the Bahamas. Uh, yes, sir. What kind he should have landed. I was told at 12.22. So uh, what by what the time kind of uh, transportation yes. he took to the Bahamas? Is there well, no, in the, no? from what I understand, the, uh, Nassau, the capital, has been spared the brunt, and so the, the airport in Nassau is, is working, as far as I understand. Okay. And the uh, other question, uh, can you reconfirm that the Secretary General uh, press conference will take place on the 18th? I'm happy to reconfirm it about 54 times. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes, sir, and then we'll go to you, Sean. Go ahead. Yes, please. Uh, my name is Harris, and user Jersey of Nigeria. Is the Secretary General aware, and if yes, what does he have to say about uh, the renewed wave of um, uh, xenophobic attacks against the foreigners in South Africa? I ask because um, the government there has refused to recognize these attacks as uh, uh, xenophobic. And uh, the security agencies, too, appear to be doing little or nothing to, to prevent these attacks sure. and uh, okay. I mean, as, bring their uh, perpetrators as, to justice. As we said, so lending credence to, and, and all these are foiling uh, no, no, I'm, uh, speculations I'm, I'm, in the I'm streets of Africa. I'm aware of the, the situation. Uh, yeah. you know, as, as we said yesterday, the Secretary General condemns the acts of violence uh, that we've seen uh, report in different provinces of South Africa, including attacks uh, against foreigners, destruction of property and businesses owned by, by, pro by foreigners. Um, it is very important that all political leaders uh, clearly and openly reject uh, the use of violence. We will note, as we said yesterday, the um, uh, President Ramaphosa's unequivocal condemnation of the violence and his call for strength and accountability uh, of those who perpetrated the violence. Sherwin. Thanks, Steph. Um, given the epidemic of femicide in South Africa, the country's justice minister said the question of reintroducing the death penalty will be taken to cabinet for further discussion. Quote, whether we are open to a referendum or not, at this stage, I cannot say. What says the United Nations? Our principal position is uh, that we stand against the use of the death penalty. Uh, the issue of femicide is an extremely important one. Uh, those who commit the crimes need to be punished to the full extent of the law, and societies as a whole also have to deal with the, um, the, underpinning, the underpinning reasons why we see these crimes, and these are crimes that need to be punished. But our position, whether it's in South Africa or anywhere else in the world, is that we stand against the use of the death penalty. If I could ask, what informs that position? We feel it's a, cru a cruel, uh, it's a cruel punishment, and, and the, the the rules. I mean, the, the 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 legal instruments in the UN have always stood uh, against uh, the death penalty. Thank you, uh, and I will leave you in the hands of Unctad, and I will try to be in a better mood tomorrow.